high learners. Learning is a continuous process, so the learner can know the process of his or her learning through some of the assessment strategies or methods or practices. Digital technologies are integrated in all the teachings and learning process for enhancing the engagement level of both teachers and learners. Even digital technologies are using for assessment purpose for enriching the assessment strategies in the different perspective in the digital world. This presentation explains on e-assessment practices, types of e-assessment, e-portfolios and uh, digital technology tools for the e-assessment practices. First of all, I am going to highlight the meaning of assessment. Assessment is a process of identifying, gathering, organizing and interpreting informations about learners learning process. Assessment involves using a variety of strategies and tools to examine, evaluate, measure and recording the documents of the student's learning. Next I am going to move e-assessment. Electronic assessment is the use of ICT or digital technologies to create, manage, deliver and assess and provide immediate feedback for diagnostic, formative and summative assessment. E-assessment has enormous potential benefits for learners in terms of learning and retention of material as well as the enhancing their engagement with the chosen subject content. E-assessment offers many advantages over traditional pen and paper exams. The most widely used forms of e-assessments are online exams or test or quizzes, e-assessment submission, e-rubrics based assessment, self and peer assessment or student response systems. Now I am going to list out the features of e-assessment. The first one is multiple responses. Learners undertake online tests many times to assess and reassess their knowledge. It provides an opportunity to the students to attempt an answer more than one time. The second feature is instant feedback. The learners get an immediate and focused feedback on their work. The personalized feedbacks help students enhance their knowledge and performance in the subject content. The third one is rigid or flexible order. The questions can be transacted in a predetermined or random order. The fourth feature is variety of assessment. It can be used for diagnostic, formative and summative assessment. The next feature is act as a guide. Direct the students to further reading or resources if they are having difficulty to answer the questions during the online examinations or e-assessment. The learners can receive the sophisticated reporting and allowing the learners to refine the exercise or identify areas in which more instructions are needed. The next one is enhance or engage. It enhances the learners' engagements and digital literacy. The next feature is anywhere and anytime. The learners can attempt or access the online test in different geographical location and at different time. The next one is diminish the workload. E-assessment systems can diminish the workload of teachers, educators and administrative staff by streamlining administrative procedures such as collecting answer script for marking and quality assurance reviews and disseminating percentage or grades and feedback. The next feature is automated marking system. Assessment rubrics can be created to facilitate automated marking system and to generate reusable feedback comment repositories. Next I am going to highlight the modes of e-assessment and its activity. Technology can help educator access the learner's learning as well as the performance in the classroom. ICT in assessment involves the use of digital devices and digital tools assist in the creation, delivery, storage or reporting of learner's assessment task, responses, grades or feedback. The following are the some of the modes of the technology integrated assessment activities or strategies. The first one is computer based assessment is nothing but CBE. It refers to assessment delivered and marked by computer. Here the computer to role is to publish the assessment results or evaluate the results. The next one is computer assisted assessment is called CAA. 
It refers to practice that relies in part on computers for instance use of online discussion forums for peer assessment as well as the self assessment. Audience response systems in group work or completions and submission of work digitally or electronically or storage of work in an e-portfolio. It covers both assessment delivered on computer either online or offline and those that are marked with the aid of computers such as those using optical mark reading it is typically formative in that it helps the learners to determine whether they have learned what the educator intended and provide timely feedback on how best to teach a subject. It can be summative with limited feedback typically being given at the end of the course and serving to grade and classify the students work. It can also be diagnostic. The next one is computer adoptive testing is called CAT. One of the modern advancements in assessment is the design and use of computer adaptive tests which add a great deal of effectiveness to the testing process. Based on the learner's response, the software will automatically adjust the level of difficulty the questions it poses. It means after a number of correct answers, it will move on the harder items or to many incorrect responses and it will move back to easier one. Next I am going to highlight the types of e-assessment. Assessment can be classified into different approaches or types based on the purpose for which it is designed. It can be classified in different way. The first one is diagnostic assessment. Assessment of a student's knowledge and skills at the beginning of the course transactions. It focuses on the present skills, competencies or abilities of learners at the point in time. And it is often said that diagnostic assessments looks backward and formative assessment looks forward. E-diagnostic assessment can be used prior to the teaching activity or if an issue is identified. It can help learners improve the self-monitoring skill to prompt deeper and more effective learning. The second assessment is formative assessment. It provides a progressive feedback to the learners about the current understanding and skills of the course or subjects. Formative assessment can also refer as assessment for learning. The main purpose of formative assessment is to monitor and afford ongoing feedback for learners to develop and improve the learning. Electronic formative assessment can be done with some digital tools such as multidisciplinary discussion boards and reflective blogging where learners can receive comments from peers and educators. The next assessment is summative assessment. The end assessment of the student's achievement generally leading to a formal qualification or certification of a skill. Summative assessment can also be described as assessment of learning. It is the evaluation of the learner learning against a set of criteria or standards. The next one is performance assessment. It is one which requires learners to exhibit or demonstrate that they have mastered specific skills and competencies by performing or creating or producing something. Normally this kind of assessment may be used for the cultural competitions like debate, drama, dance, song, elocutions and fine arts events. Now I am going to list out the tools of digital assessment alternatives. There is a lot of digital assessment alternatives or exists for assessing learners performance particularly few the web 2.0 tools available today can serve as alternative assessment tools for learners learning. Now I am going to be discuss some of the digital assessment alternatives such as online assessment, digital concept map, online forum, survey tools, wikis, blogs, e-portfolio and e-rubrics. The first one is online assessment. Online assessment is the process used to measure certain aspects of information for a set purpose where the assessment is delivered via a computer connected to a network. There are many online service providers both free and paid for designing and developing online tests and quizzes. The tools are the first tool here I am going to talk about Kahoot. Kahoot is a free student response tool for administrating 
QSS facilitating discussions or collecting survey data. It is a game based classroom response system played by the whole classes in a real time. The second tool is Socrative. Socrative is the QS based format assessment tool which multiple features that can enrich teaching learning. Teachers can design QSS, space races, exist tickets and more to collect and analyze students data in real time to make on the spot teaching changes and improve students learning. The next tool is QSIS. The QSIS is an online assessment tool that allows the teachers and students to create and use once another QSIS. After providing students with a unique access code, a QS can be recorded live as a time competitions or used as a homework with a specific deadline. After the QSIS have been completed, students can review their answers. Furthermore, the resulting data is compiled into a spreadsheet to give the instructor a clear visual of the student's performance in order to analyze trends in which areas might need to most focus on the features. The next alternative is digital concept map. Concept mapping is a teaching and learning strategy or approach that involves visualizing relations between concepts or contents and ideas using graphical representations. It is a kind of graphical organizer that consists of various circles or boxes, each of which contain a concept and are all interlinked through the linking places. The role of these linking places is to identify the relationship between adjacent concepts. Educators can assess the student's learning process with the use of mind map and concept map in a digital mode. The concept mapping tools are the first tool is bubble.s, an excellent tool for producing visually attractive concept map. It is web applications, so no need to download and install the apps. And created maps can be saved as an image format. It also supports different sharing and collaborative features. The second tool is Poplet. It is also another excellent tool students can use to create, edit and share concert maps. It offers various features like recording notes in different format with text, images and drawings. Export our final work as PDF or JPEG. Supports several language and many more. The next tool is Creatively. It offers plenty of pre-designed mind map templates, supports group work and integrated with third party tools including Chrome Store and Google Apps. The next alternative is online forums. Learners could be asked to brainstorm on a topic by posting their ideas in a discussion forum. There can be a question answer forum where every learner needs to post their answers in order to see the other's learner's response to the questions. Teachers can create many topic specific discussion forums and this could be used to evaluate learner's level of understanding and misconceptions if any. Here I am mentioning some of the online tools for creating and organizing the online forum. The first tool is Jetaboards. This is a tool offers free forum hosting that serves as an excellent site for growing an online community. This website has many features like custom profile, joinable group, automotive spam prevention, pin topic and more. The second tool is PHPBB. It is a free and open source forum bulletin board software. It can be used to stay in connect within a group of people. It wide database of users created modifications and styles contains hundreds of styles and image packages to customize our boards. The third tool is Vanilla Forum. It provides hosted and open source community forum software that is useful for discussion forums. It allows you to create a customized or personalized community that rewards positive participations automatically creates content and lets members drive more moderation. The next alternative is online survey. For conducting and organizing the paper and pencil based survey is very complicated as well as the not economic in both money and time aspects. Due to this 
reasons the online survey or digital survey tools are the need for an hour now. The tools and its features I am going to list out now. The first tool is Typeform. It is an online survey software which is a very user friendly interface that allows users to put survey together themselves. It is also available in a web based platform for collecting and sharing information in a conventional human way. The second tool is SurveyMonkey. One of the well known online survey software is SurveyMonkey. It helps us to create and run professional online surveys. surveys. It is very powerful survey tool. The third tool is Google Forms. It is a free online survey web tools and questionnaire tool that allows its user to quickly and easily put together surveys via a drag and drop interface. Teacher can organize online examination as well as the queues through this Google Forms. Google Forms can be a private or public and sync with Google Sheets to automatically collect responses. The next alternative is electronic portfolio, other name is called e-portfolio. Portfolio is a purposeful compilations and reflections of one's work, efforts and progress. Portfolios are considered as a learning and assessment tool. Portfolios are viewed both as reflective tools to document students academic progress as well as organized digest of artifacts documenting professional developments. An electronic portfolio also known as e-portfolio or digital portfolio or online portfolio is a collection of electronic evidence assembled and managed by the user usually on the web. Just electronic evidence may include imported text, electronic files, images, multimedia, blog entries and hyperlinks. Each portfolios are both demonstrations of the user's ability and platform for self-expression and if they are online, they can be maintained dynamically over time. Now I am going to highlight the types of each portfolio. The first portfolio name is development of portfolios. Demonstrate the advancement and development of student skills over a period of time. Development of portfolios are considered work in progress and include both self-assessment and reflection or feedback elements. The primary purpose is to provide a communication between students and faculty. The second type of portfolio is assessment portfolios. Demonstrate student competence and skills for well-defined areas. This may be end of the course or program assessment primarily for evaluating student performance. The primary purpose is to evaluate students' competency as defined by program standards and outcomes. The third portfolio is called showcase portfolios. Demonstrate exemplary work and student skills. This type of portfolio is created at the end of the program to highlight the quality of students' work. Students typically show this portfolio to potential employers to gain employment at the end of the degrees program. A simple portfolio can be created using presentation software like PowerPoint. There are many advanced portfolio systems currently available. The first one is Asymmetric Toolbox. The next one is Superlink. Next one is Macromedia Director. Next Adobe PageMill. The next one is Dreamweaver. The next one is Netscape Composer and Acrobat Portable Documents Format Files. The each portfolio tools can be classified into other four main types of software systems. The first one is ePortfolios Management System. These products are designed and developed specially for ePortfolios systems used in institutions. For example, Epsilon, Macara, PeplePad and TaskStream. The second one is Learning Management System is none other than LMS. It is a virtual classroom based things. These capabilities provide e-portfolios or add them as models. For example, Moodle, Fronter and Sakai. The third one is integrated system. Content management system that can provide indirect e-portfolios function. For example, Drupal ED, Factline and Movable Type. The fourth one is other systems like e -Log, and Blogger, WordPress or Wiki cannot be classified into the previous three types. 
Now, I am going to highlight the wikis and its pedagogical benefits. A wiki is a website that allows users to collaboratively write, edit and create content material in the website. The most famous example of wiki is Wikipedia, a collaboratively created online encyclopedia. Wikis have become very popular environment for collaborative projects in formal education and training. The learners contributions in wiki can be assessed by the teachers. This can also be a tool for self and peer assessment. Wikis can be used to, to engage learners in learning with others. Here I am highlighting some of the tools of wikis and its features. The first wiki tool is wikispaces.com. Wikispaces is a social writing platform that also acts as a classroom management tool by keeping teachers and learners organized and on task. It is specially designed for the classroom purpose. Not only does the sites provide easy to use templates, it is a free and also has a variety of assessment tools. The next wiki tool is wiki.com. This website is a free to users at the basic level of options. Some of its features include easy to use website templates with uh, unlimited pages, free web hosting and domain name, control over ads and the chance to earn some money with ads. The next tool is ppworks.com. With over 3 lakhs of education based uh, workspaces, the wiki like websites offer educators a range of options that increase student centered learning. Students can build websites or web pages that can be shared with other students and stops. The next thing I am going to highlight here is blogs and its features. Blogs are a web blogs that are updated on a regular basis by the author. They can contain information related to a specific subject or a topic. Blogs are also used as a daily diaries about people's personal lives, political views or even as a social commentaries. Blogs promotes the writing skill and creative skills among the learners. The teachers can assess the students learning process by the using of blog posts of the students. The first blog tool is blogger.com. Blogger is now owned by Google and has been one of the most successful blogging platforms in history. It is a free blogging site, it is most popular blogging website also. Users will need their own Google accounts to use this service. The second tool is wordpress.com. It is also one of the reliable and widely used free blogging platforms. WordPress is an open source blogging application that can either be hosted independently or on wordpress.com servers. Its features are more advanced than the blogger. The third tool is livejournal.com. It is available in free and paid version. A few notable features like video uploading, private message sending and public message posting are available in the free version of the site. Next, I am going to highlight the next alternatives of digital is digital rubrics. A rubric is a coherent set of criteria for students work that includes descriptions of levels of performance quality on the criteria. It is clear that rubrics have two major aspects, coherent sets of criteria and description of levels of performance for this criteria. It can be used to access and articulate specific components and expectations for an assignments. Rubrics can be used for a variety of assignments, research papers, group projects, portfolios and presentations. Here I have to discuss some of the e-rubrics, web tools and its features. The first tool is R Campus. R Campus is a comprehensive education management system and a collaborative learning environment. R Campus has a digital rubric features known as iRubric. The second tool is Easy Tagger. It's another digital rubric creation tool available online and can be accessed from the website www.ectagagar.com. The third tool is RubyStore. It does away with the tedium of creating rubrics from scratch by allowing us to customize one of many template rubrics. We can use the rubrics as it is or modify the templates to better serve our particular students needs. Now, I am going to highlight the mobile labs for the assessment purpose. 
the increasingly capacity of wireless communications and the growing number of mobile devices example smartphones and tablets on the one hand as well as the modern internet technologies like javascript html5 on the other hand provide new possibility for mobile based learning and assessment there are variety of mobile assessment tools that can be used to engage students and provide enhanced feedback before during and after a daily lesson or semester long unit here we have to discuss some of the mobile apps for assessment tools here the first app is socrative it is a mobile app which engages the whole classroom with education exercise and games while capturing student results in real time teachers can interact with the store data to further students understanding in the moment and review the reports to prepare for future classes the second tool is plicus it is a powerfully simple tool that lets teachers collect real time format assessment data without the need for the student devices the third app is nearport the nearport platform enables teachers to manage content on students devices it combines presentations collaboration and real time assessment tools into one integrated solution now i am going to list out the advantages of e learning the first advantage is paperless never to take print out or photocopy for the organization examination assessment also can do without papers everything can be done through the electronically it saves paper as well as the trees the second advantage is a time saving completely automated systems of e examination and e assessment systems saves the time the distributions of the questions paper through email or other online mode and after the exams they get the results instantly the next advantage is saves money students don't have to travel to a specific location to conduct the examination so even for students from a remote areas it's possible to take the examination through online result of the examination also shared through online the next advantage is assessing the students can assess the metacognition skills through the e assessment through the e assessment the educator can assess the creativity skills reflective skills and communication skills of the learners the next advantage is multiple responses it provides an opportunity to the students to attempt and answers more than one time the next advantage is immediate feedback the learners get an immediate feedback on the work the learners get the teachers feedback and peer group feedbacks now i'm going to highlight the disadvantages of e learning the first disadvantages or challenges is reliability reliability of the digital tools and assessing instruments is the biggest question mark here the second one is plagiarism plagiarism is a main problem in the online based assignment submissions cut and copy techniques is very easy for the students to complete their assignments therefore authentic information of the content is the biggest problem here the next challenge is technical skills all the teacher and students are not technically skilled to organize this kind of assessment practice the last challenge is ict infrastructure institution not having the wealthy ict infrastructure then they could not organize this kind of assessment in summary e assessment involves the use of digital devices to assist in the constructions delivery storage or reporting of students assessment task responses grades or feedback e assessment involves a rich tapestry of possibilities that allows us to evidence students learning in a much deeper and often more authentic way than has been possible with the traditional paper based assessment where students have been expected to use limited resources to respond to task i hope you may understood the concept of e assessment and its practices furthermore you may recognize the need and importance of e assessment practices to the 21st century classroom bye see you in the next session